G'day there. Today I've got with me the Microsoft Surface Book. This was the surprise new laptop slash tablet hybrid that Microsoft announced back in October. So this version that I have here is the i7 16 gig of RAM 512 gig model. It's nearly the top of the range. There will be a version with a one terabyte hard drive coming out. It also has built into the keyboard base here a dedicated graphics chip. So basically this machine is a performance powerhouse and yet a mobile lightweight laptop and tablet as well. So I've just restarted the Surface here just so that I can show you the very first feature that I think is really exciting about the Surface Book and that is the new Windows Hello camera that's built into the top of the screen just here. You'll find the same camera is built into the new Surface Pro 4 as well so it isn't a device that's unique to the Surface Book but it's a really cool feature. You can see I've just looked at the camera here and it's automatically recognized me and gone ahead and logged me in. So as I'm sure you're aware but this is a, uh, a three-dimensional infrared camera that will actually scan the depth and qualities of your face to be able to know that it's certainly you and log you in more secure than a password. Personally I think that biometrics is a great way to go for passwords. The fingerprint reader that I've got here on my Surface uh, Pro 3 with the new Surface Pro 4 keyboard makes life so much easier because I'm so mobile, logging on and off all the time, typing in my password is a major hassle. Now with the Surface Book, I can just look at the camera and log straight in or with the Surface Pro 4, I can either use the fingerprint reader or the on-screen camera. Before I get into the nitty gritty of the performance of the Surface Book, what I'll do is undock and show you how this thing works as a tablet. Now before I do that, you'll notice that I have my 4K screen here hooked up to the Surface Book via the docking station that's over here. So the docking station there has a simple uh, connector, a Surface connector on the side that can be used for either the Surface Pro 4, Surface Pro 3 or the Surface Book. So it's, a, it's an adapter, it's a docking station that'll work across all three models, which is great. So first of all, one of the most important things I think that you could use a Surface Book for in tablet mode is Microsoft OneNote. So I'm gonna take the pen, click the button on the back there, and I get my page of notes ready in uh, Microsoft OneNote. This is the app version of OneNote under Windows 10. It's certainly improved quite a lot since the previous versions under Windows 8 or even the early versions under Windows 10, which were a little bit light on for features. In most cases, I still use the desktop version of OneNote, but it's good to have this app version there as well. But OneNote will differentiate between pen and touch. So you can see here, it's a beautiful big screen and the pen is very responsive. Um, it has a very different feel to the previous versions of the pen, mainly because these tips are interchangeable. The new pen's changed a bit, as you've probably seen, but on the back of the pen, I just turn the pen over there and that's an eraser. Um, if I wanted to as well, I can actually hold the pen button down and launch Cortana. Hi Cortana and it will go ahead and do a search for me. And um, the other thing about the pen, a double click is a screenshot. So if I wanted to just take a little screenshot of the side of my notes here, I just do that and it will put that straight into OneNote ready for me to draw on it. So that's really cool. Some cool features of the new pen. In terms of battery life when you're in tablet mode though, you will find that the Surface Book is a little bit limited. I'm getting around about maybe one and a half to two hours just in tablet mode alone. That said, the tablet part only has around about one quarter of the overall battery capacity. So when you plug the tablet back into the keyboard, uh, the keyboard batteries will start running down first. It'll always conserve power in the tablet so that you've got power there as long as you can possibly have. The keyboard base will not charge the tablet in this case, um, but as soon as I plug the power cord in here, the tablet part will start charging first so that the priority is to charge the tablet, secondary, the keyboard base. But combined, when I plug the keyboard base and the tablet together, you really should expect something like about 10 hours of battery life, which is pretty cool. But I think the key thing about the Surface Book that I really want to demonstrate to you is its performance. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera in and show you how it performs doing things like Photoshop, uh, gaming and video editing. So I've just opened up a little video that I was producing for my recent trip to New York and you can see this video sequence has got a lot of cutscenes, it's got a lot of acceleration and things like that. And on the Surface Pro 3 it probably would have, you know, been a bit choppy trying to play this back but here using this dedicated GPU in the Surface Book it actually plays through really really smoothly. 
So it does a really good job of video editing and it makes life easier if that's the kind of thing that you're doing quite a lot. Now personally when I'm video editing I really want, like to work directly on the screen so I actually use the pen quite a lot and I want to move you know the, the timeline across I want to scroll through the video that works really really quickly and well on the Surface Book and I want to do things like uh, you know cut the video here and I use the combination of keyboard and pen quite a lot so that's one of the great things about having the Surface Book is that I can both work very directly on the screen with the pen be very accurate and pinpoint uh, not have to muck around with the trackpad so much or the mouse I actually really find that editing this way is a real cool thing to do. So the next thing I wanted to think about is the Surface Book for gaming. Now look, I'm not a hardcore gamer, not by any stretch of the imagination. When I was a bit younger I used to play this game quite a bit and I used this one just as a little bit of a reference just to see how things perform. So in its standard settings by default you can see here um, loading up this game, Command and Conquer, generals it's very very smooth with all this three-dimensional graphics going on here and this if I opened it up say on the surface pro 3 would probably be a little choppy now it's an older game but it did really rely heavily on that GPU rendering and so having the surface docked into the keyboard here using that graphics chip on board the keyboard is really working quite well if I go in there and load up a game um, you'll see how how smooth it is so so you can see, just scrolling around the map there, um, having a little bit of a play of the game, that it's really, really smooth, the frame rate's great, and the graphics are doing really well. Another thing that I would use the Surface Book for is editing photos. So I'm here in Adobe Lightroom. Um, last night I found a possum up in my roof, so I decided to uh, take a couple of photos of it. If I wanted to just take a closer look at it, do a bit of pixel peeping, I can use touch and zoom in. I could use the multi-touch trackpad as well. You can see it was a little bit hard with the, uh, the lighting to get some focus on uh, this photo, but being able to directly edit and uh, move around and, and work with the interface like that is fantastic. I also really love being able to you know, change my settings directly with the pen. So um, I just find that this is a really natural sort of intuitive way to work. And you can see the performance of the Surface Book here uh, kicking in when I'm making these changes and the edits are really showing through in real time. Being able to move between these really, really high resolution photos as well using that uh, graphics rendering engine that's built into the keyboard, you can see that it's really, really quick and it makes this workflow a lot easier. Now, another little trick that the Surface Book has up its sleeve is this. I'll go ahead and detach the screen Got to remember to uh, hold that key down for at least one second. It goes red, then it goes green, it's ready to detach. If I wanted to watch a movie, what I would do is just simply turn the keyboard around like this and mount the Surface Book screen on backwards, and there you go. Or uh, even if you're using the device with touch and you just wanted it to sit up a little bit more upright, um, it's a really good way to do it because uh, I've got really direct control but I can actually bring the device much closer to me in this way. Or if I prefer to have the extended battery life of the keyboard with me and to be able to use that graphics power, but in tablet mode, I can leave the Surface Book connected to the tablet, connected to the keyboard there, and I can just take it away with me like that. If you're thinking about using the Surface Book in this mode with the keyboard base attached but using it as a tablet it does become quite a heavy and bulky unit compared to other tablets but the benefit the upside is this that I can run programs like Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop or Premiere Pro and I can directly edit on the screen using touch using pen um, and those are very natural ways to work but I can do that with that performance and power as well as that extended battery life that the keyboard base gives me but that said, if you want something that is lighter weight and the performance doesn't so much concern you, then the Surface Pro 3 or the Surface Pro 4 or even the Surface 3 is probably a better option. But if you need the power and the extra battery life, then the Surface Book is just fantastic. Now the pen on the Surface Book can attach in two different places. It will just attach and snap onto the side with its magnet there on the right hand side near the power connector. Or if you prefer to keep it on the tablet, you can just put it there on the left hand side of the screen and it will hold very firmly there actually. It's, it's actually almost a little bit too firm uh, to get the pen off. I've certainly experienced a lot of buzz around the Surface Book myself. People see it and they're really, really impressed by it. I think the aesthetics of it 
and one of the key things, one of the reasons that people really want it. It is a really, really slick and clean looking unit. Even on the back of the device, there's absolutely nothing there. It's a real simple and clean design. And Microsoft have put a lot of effort in, and the Surface team have put a lot of effort into getting the aesthetics of the device right. And I think they've kicked a goal with the Surface Book. So in summary, what I'd like to say about the Surface Book is it's an ideal option for people who really require a performance powerhouse of a laptop or a notebook, but also want the flexibility of the tablet form factor. Let me give you a couple of examples of people that this device might really suit. First of all, graphic designers. So if you are somebody who runs Photoshop and Illustrator, things like that, you'd like to be able to draw on the device using a digital pen. Um, you'd like to be able to run full versions of software, not mobile cut down versions, then the Surface Book is going to be really ideal for that. You'll be able to dock the tablet into the base and use that performance and power of the dedicated GPU. And when you want to go out and do a sketch or show a client something, you could just detach the screen and go with that. Perhaps you might be an architect or an engineer or somebody working a lot with CAD and programs like that that require a lot of power and a lot of graphics resources. Again, the Surface Book can really double as a mobile workstation for you in addition to having the tablet capabilities. And that would be really important to be able to push your workflow out into the mobile, getting out on site to see customers, doing work out on site with people rather than just being bound to your desk and bound to the office. Surface Book would be really good for you. If you're doing a lot of video editing, so for instance, for me, one of the things that I really do like about the Surface Book is that it has that performance and power to be able to churn through and do lots of video editing. And it's, it would be really ideal as a mobile device for that sort of workflow. And the last example that I can think of is perhaps a software developer, somebody who's doing a lot of typing, a lot of coding. You need the power to be able to run multiple virtual machines and things like that. Again, the Surface Book is probably an ideal option. Occasionally, when you want to go and do a client meeting and, and uh, perhaps sketch out a user interface design or maybe take some notes on a briefing, well, you just attach the screen and you go mobile with that. And that, again, allows you to push the boundaries of your current workflow from having to have a desk with you and having to have that keyboard interface, which is impersonal and also not very creative, to be able to take the tablet part and just go away and do that on the one device is a really fantastic option for people. Personally, for me though, um, I'm so mobile that I really prefer the form factor of a device like the Surface Pro 3 or the Surface Pro 4. Because it's so low, lightweight, so mobile, I always have the keyboard with me, I don't have to detach it. That makes for me the Surface Pro series really the ideal option. Now the important thing to remember is that there's lots of different options for lots of different workflows and different people. So there's no one right solution. Just because the Surface Pro 3 is right for me does not mean that it's right for you. Perhaps even the Surface 3 is another option that's out there for people who want something even smaller and lighter, um, as well as the many other Windows-based tablets that are there that will run, give you the flexibility of a full operating system and yet give you the mobility of the tablet form factor as well as having a good quality keyboard with you at all times as well. So thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed my Surface Book review. Very soon I'll get my hands on the Surface Pro 4 as well and I'll be bringing you a review of that so stay tuned.